In this video, we're finishing off our Flexbox for Beginners series. We're going to be building out a, a nice, simple layout. So this is the end of my Flexbox for Beginners series. Now that doesn't mean that I'm finished with Flexbox. I'm going to keep using Flexbox. If there's enough questions, maybe I'll make a more advanced series. Um, but I will be using Flexbox in most of the things I do now. Uh, it's, it's, it's here. It's it's not even the future. Flexbox is here. It's what we're using. So uh, in this, there's going to be three different sections that I'm building. The first one's sort of a standard hero section with just a, a big background image, the landing part, you know, above the fold stuff. Uh, then we'll look at a nice little simple three column thing and we'll finish all that off with some cool call to action type of section where all the text is moved over to one side. All right, guys, so for the layout that we're going to be building, I've already done uh, all the markup because I just don't want to waste some time on this and it's pretty simple markup. Um, I have a hero here with a paragraph H1 and another paragraph. Uh, then for this area down here, I have uh, three sales points. So I did that really, really easily. I just have a div sales points and each one has a sales point inside of it with an H2 and a paragraph. Another sales point, H2 paragraph, and once again. And down here I have a call to action that we're gonna style a little bit. Um, so for this call to action, uh, I just have my CTA, then a CTA text. So I'm using that as a separate box inside of it with just a H2, a paragraph, and a link inside of there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on each one a little bit separately and we'll look at what I've already done just to style it and then we'll look at uh, how we can use flex to make it look a little bit nicer. Um, so let's look here at my hero. I've just set a background color, a background image, and a background blend mode on there. If you don't know about background blend modes, uh, I do have a video on that. There should be a little card popping up. You can check those out. Um, the important thing here is I've set my height to 100 VH, which is viewport height. It's a lock in, in uh, just so it's the full size of my screen. So no matter what my screen is, it's taking up that full height. I have a little bit of padding on it just to keep things off the side. And I've switched the color over to white. So what I want to do for this now is I do, we can get rid of my JavaScript all the way there. Uh, and let's get this. So there we go. This is what we're looking at. So for this whole hero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a display of flex. And you're going to see it's going to cause a lot of issues. So right away, it causes some problems here. Uh, it's defaulting to a row. So that means it always defaults to putting all of our content one after the other in as much space as it can. So the very first thing, if ever this happens and it's not what you want, you just have to change uh, the direction of it. So that would be a flex direction of column. So that's always the first thing. If things are going the wrong way, do your flex direction column and it will fix it. Now my awesome already, I can see it's an issue because it's taking up the full size there, which is not what I wanted it to do. I want it to be smaller. So what I'm going to do, um, and the problem with this is by default, everything is stretching. I don't want my things to stretch. I want to um, have them take less space. But in this case, I just want everything to be in the middle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I want to align my con uh, items. I want to align my items, not my content. Align my items in the center. So that should pop them right in the middle. It gets rid of that stretch issue that we were just dealing with. And then I also want it to be centered this way. So that's really nice and easy. I can do my just justify content center and bang, it's in the perfect middle the easiest way with CSS you ever will to get to center something. Super, so that looks good and that's that, that done. That's how easy it is to center everything um, if ever you have this big area and you just want to center everything in it, by far Flexbox is the way to go. Now let's go on to my sales points here. So for my sales points, I want to have three sales points, one next to each other. Um, if you would go back to the old float days, you would have to have a float left on all of them to get them to float. You'd need to deal with clears to stop this call to action from coming up underneath. We don't want to be doing any of that. And with Flexbox, luckily you don't have to worry about it. So. Uh, I'm going to shrink these down just so we can see. All I have is sales points and then each individual sale point inside. Um, so I just have some padding on the top, text align center because I want it to be centered. Uh, and then I put some margin on the left and the right um, just to separate them a little bit. And all we need to do for this, this is the easy one, display flex. And boom, one next to each other. Um, my margin here, if I got rid of my margin, all that's gonna happen is they're gonna sort of be really close to one another. Um, so by putting a bit of a margin, I'm doing one viewport width item. So it's a really small amount of space um, just to give myself a bit of space. And let's give that a background color, background of red. 
just so you can see about what that's giving it. Um, and one thing, what, what it, this is really the one viewport width. So I have the one there, and then I have two here, two here, and one here. Uh, one thing I could do if I wanted to, um, instead, if I had no margin on that, you can see they're actually uh, touching each other. You might think that I could use something like my um, space around or all of that. The only thing to be careful with is um, because of the way these are, uh, they're taking up multiple lines of text, so that might not work. But what you could do is you could do a width of say uh, 30%. So that it leaves all this empty space over on the side, right? Because we have 30, 60, 90, we have 10% left over. We don't have to worry about margins like I was just doing. You don't have to suddenly start trying to calculate margins. I could come on my here, I could do justify content and do space around. And now there's an equal amount of space around all of my items and it keeps it off the side. So sometimes people mix up space between with space around. If you get stuck to the side and you, you go, oops, I chose the wrong one. I'm just going to switch over to the other one. So that is a nice thing. I can just do a width and it will set a solid width or alternatively, I could say flex 0, 130. Um, or this would be the same as, um, as we saw. Uh, a flex basis of 30%. Um, flex basis and width are going to work very similar to one another. So a flex basis of 30% and it should work. Now I could know what we could actually do here. Uh, why don't we do that is build a media query into this. Um, so what we could do is I'm going to do um, flex direction of column. So they're actually going to stack one on top of each other. And then what we can do is at media min width of say uh, 40 rem flex. Uh, we want my sales points to have a flex direction of row. So here they're one next to each other. They have that nice equal spacing. And then when I get to that 40 rem, boom, they pop one on top of each other instead. Uh, and obviously we wouldn't want that red background to be on these. Let's get rid of the red background. Um, so it's a really nice way of using the flex direction column and row at a media breakpoint um, to get them to stack from side to side to one on top of each other, wherever you want that to happen. So there's a nice little solution that you can use in your designs. I use this all the time for uh, navigations. It's really nice. You have a navigation that goes all the way across. Mobile size, it's stacking one on top of each other. Uh, and the last thing I want to look at here is the call to action. So call to actions, uh, well, I mean, it's not some, I called this call to action because I didn't know what else to put in there. Um, this is a nice little simple one that I want to do where you have a big background image, but your text is only on part of it. So my text, I only want my text to be over here on the right side. Uh, and this is by far probably the easiest one to do of all of them. So on here, as usual, a display of flex. And nothing will change when I first do that because I only have one item in here. Let's go look. Um, I'm making my CTA display flex. So the only thing flexing is this one box. So nothing's going to change and nothing's going to try and squeeze around. No weird things are going to happen. Um, the only thing is I only want it to be on one side. So I want that big, nice background image, but with this only on the side. So just like before, I can do my flex basis of 50% and it will take up 50% of the space. This is, as I said, similar to using a width of 50%. Um, now what I could do on here is I could give this a justify content flex end and it's going to shoot over to this side. So it's still, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like doing a float right. But again, if I was using a float on this, all of a sudden my background would disappear. I get all these weird issues and all of that. Um, and that would be doing the float on this thing. It just, it causes some weird stuff to happen. So by using the flex and just flex end, it aligns it where I want. Maybe I think this is a little bit too close to the end uh, here. So I could just give it some padding say like 2M, uh, just to give myself some space all the way around it, or even like a zero top and bottom, two left and right, um, just to make sure that it's staying off the side a little bit. Uh, and then again, this is somewhere where a media breakpoint could be useful because now it's starting to look li a little bit strange. Um, so I could do at media min width 
of 40 rem just to be the same breakpoint as we used before um, and I could do my now my flex basis is 100% uh, whoops I mixed these up this should be 50 so by default it's at 100 and when I get to 40 rem so you can see there it's taking up all the space and then once I hit 40 rem it switches over and takes up 50% and oh, there you go so a nice easy way to use Flexbox in your layouts. Um, it's just a few little examples. If you have any other ideas or things you'd like to see done with Flexbox, please let me know in the comments below. I'll gladly make some more videos on this. I love Flexbox. It's a really awesome tool. And there's the nice simple layout. Again, I didn't go into anything too complicated here, but it's ways that Flexbox at the simplest form can work to make you a layout much easier than the old floats and clears could work. So if you're still building layouts with floats and clears, unless you need some really old browser support, try doing a Flexbox one with your next project. Thank you so much for watching this. If you still have any questions about Flexbox, please let me know down in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, there is a new video like this one every single Wednesday, so consider subscribing. And until next time, don't forget to try and make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.